Hello YouTube, this is Corporal Kira here again with you and today I'll continue playing Amber. So I hope today I'll be able to read it a bit better. So let's load our previous save. Now, thus began their strange routine. Tristan Mallory woke <laughs> God damn it, that's a bad start. Tristan Mallory woke up early in the morning to get to go to work, but before leaving and rushing to the fog, he had to take a few minutes of preparation to face the daily grind. A grind. A few, a few brief minutes at the threshold of her door, gazing at the sleeping amber. Then he ran away through the streets covered by dead leaves, escaping far away toward the mountains of paperwork. Toward the faithful tower furnished by vast offices there I'm sorry, where the slaves chained to their computers toiled away for the lord of that place. Anyway, that was what the little girl thought his working day looked like. His working day looked like. As for her, she woke up easily around 9 a.m. and her first reflex was to stretch and yawn in front of the cartoons with a bowl of cereals in hand. She followed her favorite heroine's adventure. Adventures. All of them were beautiful and courageous. All of them were friends for life. Princesses with elegant superpowers. Covered with light effects and flower petals. What is this? The Powerpuff Girls? I have no idea. Princess? I don't know much girl cartoon, so... I think that's fine for me to not do it. Yes. But that's also not a real like cartoon, I think, because the author rights were just <laughs> banging them into one spot. Rich and loved, they lived a perfect and available existence, especially the main character who owned a bedroom very similar to Amber's. It was colorful and filled with cute accessories. However, this room was only a part of a bigger place, furnished the same way. How I would like to live in a castle as well! With her cute friends, the heroine haunted the brilliance, fell into traps and called for the help of her charming prince, an ideal infant, and fan what? And fantized man who served her hand and foot. Life seemed easy, full of laughs and adventures. All that was needed was a sent back and nasty woman to her hiding place in the darkness. After all, she was nasty because she envied the young dazzling girl. Nasty because she was old and delusioned. Amber would have loved to have magical powers, allowing her to make cute outfits appear, allowing her to have a stable where unicorn slept, allowing her to have a ballroom where she could organize extravagant parties based on beautiful dresses and cupcakes. It was always really disappointing for her to see the end of the episode. Of course, there were other programs, but the store with magical jewels has her, was her favorite one. When the cartoons ended, she went to fill in her coloring books, daydreaming about being among those heroines. And then, at midday, at midday uh, she heated up the leftovers that Tristan had left and went back watching TV. New programs awaited her. Again, she had her favorite 
the one where a little girl owned a puppy that was different from the others. It was a red puppy who could sneak around. It was so very adorable with its big eyes and its comical expressions that it made her melt. I just, I'm just wondering why is it such a need for us to know this? Like, okay, she watched cartoons, yeah, nice cartoons of princess. Okay, I can understand that, but why so detailed? Okay, let's not ask the author. He did a game, did a good game, so let's continue. Well, I don't say playing or reading. How I would uh, like to have a dog that cute! The meal passed quickly to the rhythm of opening songs that she knew by heart. This was usually the time when Tristan called to make sure everything was okay. She never missed this opportunity to tell him the content of the episode of the day. How the heroine had defeated the evil witch with her magic mirror. How the little dog had helped her mistress at school, and so on. Relieved, he would start eating his sandwiches with appetite, sated more by the little girl's words than by his meal. She hung up satisfied with her story. Then, after the last cartoon, turned off the television to rest in her big bed, surrounded by her stuffed toys. Usually at this time she read a fairy tale. She loved to tell herself the story of uh, Cinderella again and again while uh, sucking her teddy bear's ear. It was very, it was her favorite. People and life uh, itself were nasty with Cinderella every day. She had to work hard. It was exhausting. She had to earn her every meal and the nasty ugly sisters believed themselves superior. Now again about Cinderella. And will be I wonder, will be a full walkthrough of the Cinderella like that no one ever watched it or read it? Or even heard about the story. Fortunately the prince recognized the heroine's natural talent. She was pretty and she was special. Every person is special. Yeah. Everyone is. Just to see that speciality, uh, you have to look at the person from a certain angle. He brought her with him. Uh, he brought her with him to his castle to live a golden existence, where she wouldn't have to work her fingers to the bone where the money flowed freely, where Cinderella could have everything she wanted, including all the things that, that shone, accessories, dress, cake. All she had to do to fill time was to organize parties with her friends. The ugly sisters were not invited. They were too ugly, too rude, and they did not deserve such a paradise. Cinderella was happy. She loved in the manner of the only real or true love, the kind of love with guiding and glitter. For what more could she ask? Amber fell asleep happily, hoping to, hoping to meet her charming prince one day. She dreamed of the one who would only have eyes for her and would give her a room like the like the one the princesses that she admired so much. When she opened her eyes, the little girl rushed again into the living room to watch tape, a Disney film. Depending on her mood, she chose one with animals or one with a couple who lived happily ever after. Often she watched the Snow White or the Three Little or I'm sorry, or the Little Mermaid. Amber loved the idea of a glass coffin containing a body which would not grow old despite death. 
but that would remain always young and beautiful. Lying in wait for the magical kiss that would free her of her prison, changing the course of her story and spiriting her away from the common hunt, hut. From the common hut of proletarian dwarves, who while friendly were also rough. She loved it just she loved it just as she loved the idea of a beautiful and rebellious mermaid swimming through the ocean looking for treasures but sacrificing her freedom for the man in her life about whom she had fantasized a thousand times the beautiful and rebellious mermaid never listened to anyone which reminded her of her own condition she too was a sweet and Cavaricious, what? Cavaricious, a young woman. Okay, she played these movies in a loop day after day until snack time came. By then, trade of their idyllic image, she dug into the sweets that Tristan brought for her: cupcakes, colorful macaroons, uh, pastries. Bread and Nutella. Damn. There's a lot of copyrights in here. I wonder if I'll have to plug them out for you. And beep all over the place. Okay. Of course, she ate in front of the television. There were cartoons at this time as well. As it was getting late, she finally pushed the off button to resume her fantasies elsewhere in her room, wielding her dolls with skill, perfectly uh, depicting the <laughs> course of her dreams. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, God. But the high point of each day was sure when Tristan finally returned from home. She knew he was uh, there from the uh, creaking of the door. She would rush into the living room and, all joy, she would throw herself at him, timidly at first, then with more enthusiasm over the weeks. She loved to uh, Whoa. Tristan looks creepy like that. She loved being carried uh, on his shoulders to mimic the airplane and to fly through the flat until they crashed on the bed left. Playing together was so much fun. With her friend, she could give life to her characters more easily. Her favorites? Playing mommy and daddy. Amber took the role of the mother and always took good care of the well-being of her child. A PVC doll with dead eyes, supposed to embody an adorable little baby. She washed him, changed him, cuddled him, and gave him his bottle. By the way, if someone knows what a PVC doll is, um, would you please tell me? Because I really have no idea about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tristan had the role of the father. <laughs> Look at his face. Okay, Tristan had the role of the father. He had to read the newspaper in the kitchen while waiting for his wife to cook him a good meal. A role which hardly got him involved, but he was very well satisfied, satisfied with that. Amber took her task very seriously. She had, to lead, she had the lead role after all. Therefore, she served the imaginary husband plastic fries and fruits with a boozy pout. He appreciated the gesture. However, the real meal was left to Tristan's charge once the game ended, a meal which the little girl took as an opportunity to tell the rest of her fabulous adventures. Tristan only had to listen to her with a smile on his face before he required her to go to the bathroom to wash up and uh, brush her teeth. Amber always uh, crumpled, uh, crumpled at the bedroom bathroom's time, 
but her uh, sexless mermaid baby quickly helped her to forget that inconvenience. More than once, she slyly waited uh, for the 30-year-old man to come close enough to her to shoot him with a fish-shaped water gun. Innocent uh, laughter would uh, ensue. Then she tucked her into her big princess bed while telling her a story, usually a fairy tale. In those moments, she blinked more and more slowly, looking up at him with a touching expression. It could make Tristan melt from cuteness. He was careful not to close the door all the way. The, car the corridor's light had to hunt the monsters, which could disturb Amber's sleep. It was a specific request and uh, she was fearful. The third-year-old man had to protect her from ghosts at the slightest shout. That was his promise to her. Before going to sleep, Tristan Mallory found some comfort in sleeping her sleep in seeing her asleep. She hoped that her sleep would be inhabited with nice dreams and that she would forget that she wouldn't forget him that she would think about him, in whatever way it may be. Could she even feel his presence, or how much he cared for her? Their schedule allowed the weekend to turn into a more festive time. It was the time of outings. It was out of the question for Amber to be bored that she stayed indoor again in the tight and, and bleak flat. She had to see some landscape. So they went to, to lively play to... <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. So they went to uh, lively places, the pool, the amusement park, the ice rink, the cinema, the restaurant. Uh, she had to try everything. Every week was a different universe. Running along at a brisk pace with her impeccably polished shoe, the little girl jumped from right to right while hanging on Tristan's arm. It warmed his heart to see her having innocent fun. In front of a smile, that big, he could only imitate the little girl's good mood despite himself. Often when he asked, when she asked for dessert, a pancake or an ice cream, he saw out of the corner of his eye that uh, she had wiped cream on her face. The temptation to lick the dab of ice cream from the tip of her nose or the corner of her lips was, was nearly too much. Such a thing, both childish and unhealthy, tickled his darkest thoughts, most pitiful thoughts. However hard, however hard he rejected them, his hands became sweaty and trembling, confusing his torment. But Amber couldn't understand. Amber was a little girl, only a little girl. But the months flew by at breakneck speed. Tristan refused to admit it, but his young change was growing. He wanted to ignore the fact to close his eyes, but the Unstoppable passage of time had already done its work. Amber was going through a strange crisis. That evening she was particularly angry and proclaimed uh, rigorously. I don't want to be a child anymore. How so? I want to become older. But you have plenty of time for this, Amber. But I want to grow faster. I could do more things. A third-year-old man sighed. He obviously 
did not know how to enter such assertions. He had never had a child and he was not very good at placating or others, regardless. Taken a bag, he left the girl to pound in the living room to pout in the living room while he went to take a long relaxing shower. While he was uh, soothing his worries in the rush of hot water, she was heaping. What? She was heaping? Okay. That's not fair. I wish I could be older right now. If I only had a model. I wonder that Tristan's wife looked like. For example. I'm sorry. I wonder what Tristan's wife looked like, for example. I'm sure that she was kind. But he never wants to talk about her. He avoids the subject. Maybe he's hiding something. Intrigued, Amber took adventure to his absence to open a drawer she had never touched before. Inside was a big leather notebook. She was sure she had found the treasure, so she took it and opened it. It was a photo album. Spread on the pages were bright smiling and tender gestures. Whoa. Brought in the pictures, the little girl discovered her guardian, young and fresh, in the arms of a, a coquettish young lady. <sighs> I feel sorry for the guy. That's a big pain. Dressed soberly and testfully, she was strolling alone along the seashore with a shawl on her shoulders. Another picture showed her in a park holding an ice cream, but what got her eye was one specific, one, one specific picture that towered in the center of the page. Tristan, wearing a suit, less leading his lover out of a church with clumsy footsteps under a shower of flower petals. She looked so happy, so fulfilled and her big and relieved white dress that Amber was stiffified. Even more so because the bride looked exactly like her. She's so pretty. What are you looking at? Tristan's sudden appearance made her jump so quickly that she dropped the forbidden object. A 30 year old man's gaze darkened immediately. You searched through the closet to see what my wife looked like, didn't you? She answered in a shaky voice, guiltily. Yes, are you going to scold me? Of course not. I just would have preferred that you didn't see it. Why? Why don't you ever tell me about her? I want to know. He sighed, appearing upset as he looked into those begging eyes, eyes that he had never been able to resist for long. Reluctantly, he sat down on the couch and told her how he had met the one he thought would be his lifelong partner, and related all that they had gone through together. Amber listened with wide-eyed attention. She liked the story very much. Tristan seemed to get younger as he evoked that, describing uh, how head over, describing how head over heels for her uh, he had been, and how happy she made him. I'm sorry, <laughs> my reading is getting worse and worse of every minute. Ah, damn. Their peaceful and ordinary everyday life was something the little girl invited. Caught up in the tale, she couldn't help but pressure him. And then, and then, what happened? Until the light shining in the man's uh, green eyes brutally vanished. 
then she she get away where to far away to a place I can't reach anymore every day I pray that she'll somehow hear me that she'll wake up that she'll remember me I don't know if she'll ever emerge from that dream that's keeping her captive wait a second great so oh I believe I know what's happening okay I won't tell you just not to spoil the surprise but I have an idea in mind is she dead sometimes it feels like it but no she's alive just in a different world from mine if I could have joined her, or would have, uh, if I could have joined her, I would. I would have sacrificed everything for her. And today, she's forgotten me forever. That's that. Tristan sighed again, head down, as a heavy, crushing silence came between them. Amber stared at the photo bewitched by the woman's smile. Deep down her heart, she had an odd thought. If I was older, I could replace Tristan's wife, and he wouldn't be sad anymore. That night, she left the dev devastated Tristan lying as immobile as a statue on the sofa. I'm sorry, let me read that again. That night, she left a devastated Tristan lying as an immobile as a statue on the sofa. Slipping between the covers of her cozy bedsheets, she felt helpless. If only I was older. The thought took root more violently in her mind to the point where it became an emergency. She had to become Tristan Mallory's wife. A new routine seized little Amber. It was out of the question for her to stay a little girl. She wanted to grow as prematurely as a butterfly, its beauty crushed by its uh, ephemeral light. Thus began a kind of a dull sense. She no longer woke up in the morning than the 30-year-old uh, <laughs> She no longer woke up in the morning when the 30-year-old man went to work. She waited until midday to surface and took her meal at that time. Tristan did not call at his usual hour anymore. She knew that she would be not in a good mood. After a brief meal, the young girl watched television while leafing through magazines. Uh, but with her uh, band factor's pocket money. Her afternoon ranged between American TV shows and beauty tips. Uh, between the pages of magazines, she learned how to seduce men, a light uh, motif she liked a lot. Okay. She wanted Tristan to look at her from another angle and, if a diff and in a different way. To be seen as a woman, she had to act as a woman, but she absolutely didn't know how to do this. Um, is it just me or... Um, okay, never mind, Let, uh, let's continue reading. This magazine... This... Magazine... Why not these magazines? There's no such word? I don't know something? Okay, these magazines, which were overflowing with tips of all kinds, appeared to be an Eldorado. Through the articles, she learned how to act and how to be a true lady. It wasn't very complicated. She only had to keep a close watch on her gestures, to control her every moment perfectly so as to convey the best image possible. She, tr 
track down all human weaknesses, every inconvenience, and walk with a relaxed air and self-assurance designed not to frighten her crush. Amber shook her head while she was reading the magazine article. Of course, she had to be open and smiling, but not so much that she came across the exorbitant uh, she had to laugh. Uh, I'm sorry. She had to laugh often, but not too loudly and never in a hysterical manner. She had to be independent while taking initiative, but only if the situation was favorable and at the same time uh, non-threatening. She had to show herself to be a natural, to be as natural as possible while enhancing all her adventures with makeup. Amber understood the necessity of buying some. Amber understood the necessity of buying some in order to be a true woman, and finally, to oh, shit, to dress in a manner feminine enough to enhance while being at the same time sober enough so as not to as not to attract unwanted attention. And then she learned how to listen to men, and that talking too much was a sign of a of egotism, and that she should be discreet while also present and available for when he really needed it without being too obvious. As she turned page after page, the young girl felt a pressing urge to spend all her money on the products shown in the advertisements and praised by the journalists. After all, she would need them in order to seduce Tristan. How could she have the slightest chance without cheating a little? Furthermore, uh, furthermore a revealing psychological test claimed that Amber would gain more affection acting like a fragile little girl. Men needed to be uh, reassured of their uh, virility and of their protector's role. Also, she was... <sighs> Shit. Also, she was herself too vulnerable, too fragile. She couldn't manage anything worthy without help. She had to find valid uh, validation in her uh, in his eyes, validation in her very existence. If he thinks that I'm pretty, I'll be pretty, like on that photograph. Like this, Amber spent her afternoons reading tips, training herself to concealing herself. Oh, training herself and concealing herself. Like this, Amber spent her afternoons reading tips, training herself and concealing... I already read that, why am I reading it again? Damn it! Twitter's blink every time the background changes, come on! When she wasn't watching soap operas, she was shopping in the city to buy clothes, accessories, and cosmetics. The city, like the television, showed her vision of absolute and infinite love, of perfect and pure love. It was a drug, an obligation, a flawless pleasure in an order. Every billboard sold the same dream. Oh, so cliché. Oh, so desirable. It followed after the fairy tale formula. Formula. They all lived happily ever after with abandoned wealth and many children. The heroines of romance, of romances and films, all ran after the same goal: that to profit, ease, luxury, a life where everything was easy, but where everything had lost its taste. It was a dull light and a hollow one. It was an internal masquerade. But 
this exi exist shit. but this existential emptiness was easy to fill. One had only to consume and be consumed. One only needed to devote one's soul to removing every trace of natural to hide the grotesque natural body, the body that was too personal, too imperfect, too real to be replaced with a, mir with a mirage. One only needed to spend without restraint in order to conquer and pay the piggy bank of one's dreams. That machine gave every bank note, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, that machine gave, that gave bank notes and weak or orgasms in order to make one's life into a diamond, a beautiful, uh, shiny trinket that everyone should have in one's living room, destroying one's own immer immaterial value of replacing it with a coin of the realm. Mm, I didn't say it the first time, but I think I'll say it now. Um, is it just me, or the store is getting a bit dirty? No? Those are all normal words for a little girl to say? That's like, I've got Moe syndrome, how is it? Okay. Well, let's continue. And the one best in idleness turning around in one's cage without purpose of continuing living with dignity, wandering like a lost soul, uh, wandering like a lost soul, disgust, disguised as a clown, with too much red paint on the face. The result? A grim robot. One needs to feel the lack of absence of life, the disease that devours one's blood and all one's authentically with authenticity with money, always more money. Bye bye bye, until one forgets discomfort and one's sense of ill-being. Amber admired today's celebrities, those picture-perfect idols whose bodies ex exuded not even the slightest trace of life and whose uninspired songs only glorified the permanent state of pleasure pleasure without work. Like massively produced Barbie dolls, Barbie dolls clones by the dozens, uh, such celebrities merged into a single canon of unsurpassed beauty, deemed absolute truth. The stars divided into this endless cycle of vanity, uh, with such ease it was truly fascinating. Every minute that passed after a singer's first success was a minute of intense what uh, of intense scrutiny. Um, I'm sorry, never seen such word. Maybe I've heard it, but never seen it. Uh, as the whole world glued its eyes on the morbid show that was her slow suffocation and imminent and imminent drawing uh okay guys judging by how i read soon i'll have to stop so let's see if the face changed next or not because i'm trying to find a nice place where i could like pause it and continue not interrupting uh, this, this part of the story. So, nothing could bring more than exquisite pleasure, nor be a prettier sight than that, than that of young woman slowly being engulfed by the shadowy tentacles of their dreams. 
They sacrificed their bodies to the cuts of plastic surgeries, scalpels, to the point where they no longer resembled themselves anymore, to the point where they transformed into some kind of wonderful monsters. They had rejected their personalities and histories to blend with the world, to confirm themselves to the public's every expectation, to become the shop windows of modern times and the faces of a single form of happiness advertised at every street corner. Happiness that our little amber longly gazed upon. While becoming a star seemed out to reach her, to her reach, uh, while becoming a star seemed out of her reach, looking like one with a, a duty that the tablets never Okay, let's try it one more time. While becoming a star seemed out for rich, looking like one with a duty that uh, tabloids never case to remind her of, the f uh, frivolous media with so little thoughts and so many consequences. Okay, guys, you know. I think this is a good part to uh, finish this episode and I'll continue reading from this page, from this scene. So thank you very much, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, oh my god, what am I saying now? Thank you very much all for watching, for hearing and I'll continue this video as soon as I can. I'm sorry that it was such a big break between the episodes, but I'll try to make I'll try to make them a bit better next time, next multi-episode videos. So as always, I'm waiting for your comments, your uh, likes, posts, advice, anything you want, anything you want, anything you dream of, anything. Just if you want to. Uh, write something, please, I'll be happy to read it, um, if anyone would, of course. So, this has been Corporal Kira, dismissed.